Hello, I'm Alistair McLeod and I'm here on behalf of the Gold Money Foundation and with me is Juan Castaneadas. Have I pronounced it correctly? Yes, you did. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is a senior lecturer at yeah. UNED University in Madrid. Yes. And you also have a website, the old lady of threadneedlestreet.com. Yes, exactly. Why, why did you pick that name? Well, because I am a fan and a supporter, if I may say it, of James Gilray's uh, work. In the 18th century, I think he's uh, a master of uh, of the caricatures. And, Absolutely, and yes. I think that you can even uh, teach monetary economics uh, just following his uh, drawings and sketches. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the next thing that I'm going to do <laughs> in my right. university. I think so. Um, the thing that's, I mean, we, we live in very interesting times. It's sort yeah. of Chinese interesting, like um, <coughs> it's the sort of interesting you don't really want in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the root of this, it seems to me, is the difference between sound money and weak money. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just wondering what your take is in terms of um, how far we've moved away from sound money and to what extent the problems we have today can be laid at the door of fiat currency. Well, that's a very Big good question. question. Yeah, yes indeed. It is a question that I should have developed in my thesis. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is that I do think that most of the problems we are suffering since 2007 come from uh, the fact that we are living in a 100% fiat currency system. And we don't have an anchor for more to preserve monetary stability. So the difference between a sound money and a weak uh, money system, in my view, the basic one is that under the sound money system, uh, there is a rule that we are giving to the central bank to preserve the purchasing power of the money. This rule can be put in terms of the gold, silver, or uh, gold and silver together, because under that system, the gold standard system, the central bank could not over-issue means of payments in the economy, because at the end of the day, they, they had the obligation to redeem all the paper notes um, people wanted to give to them, and uh, in exchange, they had to, to give to the people the gold and the silver required. So people with gold and silver would actually be confident that uh, the money is not being debased. Because, Absolutely. Because it is, it effectively, the, the, a complete standard takes it out of the hands of government. Exactly. Well, not completely, because during the classical gold standard years, uh, the government fixed the price of the, of the, of the gold in, in terms of the currency. And following, you know, the Milton Friedman's uh, a classical critic to the to the classical gold standard. Uh, if you are a supporter of the free market economy, you don't want anybody to fix any price. But obviously, even though taking into account this uh, flaw of the classical gold standard, at least the government couldn't uh, take uh, a monetary policy in its hands to do whatever they they wanted to do to finance recurrent deficits. For example, as we have seen in the last. Uh, 50 years now that the gold standard has been uh, totally abolished. Indeed, and um, it's, it's allowed uh, governments to finance themselves purely by expanding either money or, or the quantity of credit in the economy. Yeah. And um, that really, I think, is what's going on with QE in yeah. the UK at the moment. Hmm. Um, we've had two rounds in the United States, but there's still an open checkbook there, isn't there, really? Yeah, I think that the problem is much bigger in the case of the US because of, of the quantity of, and the quality of the key e expansionary measures. In particular, if you take a look at the last figures of the M M M4 growth or M2 growth in the case of the US uh, and the growth of the base money, it is huge. I think that the money supply in the broad sense is growing at uh, Roughly ten percent. Yes. Well, I, annually. Absolutely. And um, I, I recently uh, produced a chart yeah. on true money supply or Austrian money supply, yeah. and I think it was growing at something like uh, fourteen, fifteen percent. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And base money is, is increasing even more, by yes. twenty percent or something like that. So this is a symptom that the the central bank is issuing a lot of money, is pumping money into the economy mechanically. You know, like uh, here you are. This is. This is the way we have chosen to, to exit the crisis. It is, it is a very bad way. It's really the destruction of money, it seems to me, that's going on. Because as long as you have um, interest rates at zero to a quarter percent, and you have an inflation rate running, if you believe the CPI figures, at 4%, if you go to shadowstats.com, you're looking at 
10 percent or whatever yeah. figure it is, um, then every day that passes you are destroying capital, you're destroying savings. And it seems to me it's a funny way to go about things. I mean, where's the recovery going to come so long as you continue to destroy savings? Well, that's a very good question because um, this is not the way to, to exit uh, the crisis. I, I totally agree with your point because with this um, way to exit the crisis, we are just, we are just uh, delaying the, struct the, the adjustment of the economy. Because first we need the economy to adjust to the new situation. We are not going to grow anymore based on cheap credit. That's what I think. This is not the proper way to, to foster uh, credibility and to foster economic growth in the future. So what the Fed is doing is just to finance the deficit the, the, the government, the federal government is, is, is uh, running in the last years. It's the unstated objective, isn't it, really? Yeah. What they're doing is not so much, well, it's partly, I suppose, keeping the banking system from, yeah. balance sheets from imploding, but it's, it's also uh, financing the government deficit. And yeah. one wonders what level interest rates would be mm. if, um, if there was no um, printing money purely for that purpose. Well, yeah, yeah. yes, because the Federal, uh, the, the Federal Reserve is not only supporting the banks, as you said, as the lender of last resort of the economy, they didn't want to go through the same experience as in the, in the 30s, uh, where uh, the, I think that the money, money growth in broad terms uh, declined or f fell by 30% uh, Yes, in it three was years. particularly bank credit contracted. Uh, exactly, yes, exactly. Yes. They, didn't want to, they didn't want to repeat that uh, mistake. Well, I agree with that. But they go even, even farther. And they are uh, giving the money to the to the treasury just to exp to spend to, to pump public money into the economy. This is the bad way to do it. So they have the privilege that they have one nation, one treasury, and one central bank supporting the whole plan of the government. So I think this is a mistaken way to to uh, to go through this uh, to to try to overcome the, this crisis. And they are going to 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 suffer the consequences. I think in the in the in the near future.